What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'll be upgrading my computer and I really want you guys to go ahead and see how I did it and to follow me with the steps that I take and then to also see some of the struggles that happened. Anyways let's go ahead and get straight into this video. Now for my first upgrade I'll be changing my motherboard. I'm upgrading from an ASUS ROG B550XE to an ASUS ROG X570 Crosshair 8 formula. This is an outstanding motherboard with lots of performance advantages and customization. It has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and it also has the option for you to water cool its own VRM. Now, retail price for this is about $800, but I was lucky to get it for just under $600. Now, what I did first is install everything possible onto the motherboard, but I really wanted to clean the VRM's water block first because usually when water blocks come out of the factory, there's always factory debris in there that can clog up your loop. So I went ahead and started removing it. I first flipped the motherboard, then removed the screws holding the back plate in place. But when I removed it, the freaking heat pads came to life. I made sure to give it a few pokes before picking it up, just to make sure that it was safe. I then removed some more screws and finally the entire shroud came off. That was a lot of unscrewing. After removing the shroud of the motherboard though, it looked pretty cool. I saw the active chipset heatsink, and I liked the little fan that cooled it down. I then went ahead and removed the water block that also had some screws on it too, but I made sure to remove the heat pads and place them somewhere so I won't lose them. But when I was removing them, I saw a small square heat pad. It cools down this small die over here. Maybe it's for the OLED panel? I don't know. But after removing the top cover, I saw a lot of debris that could clog up my loop. So I went ahead and gave it a nice wash, and it was ready to go. Now that I'm done voiding my motherboard's warranty, it's time to actually install things on here. First, I'm going to be installing the M.2 SSDs. I'm using two. Um, one of them being a 1TB Samsung M.2 NVMe SSD that has a really, really high read and write speed, and it supports PCIe 4.0. This is going to be my game drive. And for my actual boot drive, a 500GB Western Digital Black M.2 NVMe SSD drive. This storage device also has a really, really fast read and write speed, and my system's boot time went from 10 seconds down to just 5. When I removed the M.2 heatsink, I saw that it already had a standoff pre-installed. Thanks, Asus. Now the method that they have for installing the drives is really cool. They both go in the same standoff, so I went ahead and held mine down with two fingers to screw it down. Now, the first slot is PCIe 4.0, and the second slot only goes up to PCIe 3.0, which I believe is Gen 3. So I went ahead and put my Samsung in the first slot, and my Western Digital in the second slot. After reinstalling the M.2 heatsink, I went ahead and removed the AM4 retention clips, because I need to install the retention system for Corsair's router block. Now before I started building, I was really debating if I should use an all-in-one or a custom water loop, but I ultimately just went with the loop, because I really wanted to uh, have that water-cooled VRM motherboard advantage, I guess you could say. I then went ahead and installed the mounting hardware, and I opened up all four DIMM slots. And I also lifted up the AM4 retention bar. Now the CPU I went for is definitely a classic, and something that I can rely on and definitely upgrade over time. The Ryzen 7 2700X. The CPU is honestly outstanding, and it's a really nice option if you're going for cheap AM4 CPUs. But when I overclock it, it does get a little hot, hence the water loop. I then went ahead and installed my RAM, which is 32GB of Dominator Platinum. After that, I went ahead and placed a little bit of thermal grease, and installed Corsair's XC7 CPU water block, that I hydro did myself. And finally, the motherboard is just about ready to be installed into the case. But first, I need to prepare the case. Now you guys have probably already guessed which case I'm going for here, but it's Corsair's 5000T. I picked this case because not only does it have built-in RGB, but also, it's just the right size for what I want to do, and the airflow in this case is actually outstanding due to there being more air channels. I've already removed the top, um, front, and side panels here, but there's still a few more steps. Now, the first things I did here was go ahead and remove the side panel, the side fan tray, and the beauty cover. Then, I went ahead and installed my power supply, which is Corsair CX750 RGB. This power supply is really nice. It has an 8 LED fan that shuts off at low loads and that you can control through IQ. This power supply doesn't run hot at all, and it supplies my system with plenty of power. Now, some of you eagle-eye viewers might have seen that my hard drives were already installed, 
Well, this was actually from one of my videos. I'll go ahead and leave a card up for you to check it out after this one. In this cage, I have a 2TB Western Digital and a 2TB Seagate Barracuda. That way I have 4TB of space that I can use that definitely will not hinder system performance. I then took out the fan tray I removed and installed the case fans. These fans are Corsair's SP120mm RGB, but these ones are special. They're able to reach up to 25 RPM, and I believe they use the same motor and blades as ML RGB Pros. I took these off my Capellex because they can bring in a lot of air because of how fast they can spin. So these will be perfect for my build. I then installed my motherboard and screwed it down. I was able to do this with the case standing upright because I installed two standoffs that actually held the motherboard in place while I did it. I then did a little bit of cable routing, but something that helped me make it look slightly neater was these little right angle adapters. I got one for my USB 3.0 port on the bottom and my 24 pin ATX connector. Some more cable routing later, and now it's time to install the pump. I'm using Corsair's XD3 pump reservoir combo that I also hydro dipped. I tested this pump against the XD5 reservoir um, and pump combo, and there wasn't really a difference, apart from price of course. After installing the rear fan and doing some more cable routing, it's time for the radiator. I'm using Corsair's XR5 360mm copper core radiator, paired with 3 LL120mm and 3 QL120mm. Yes, this entire build is going to have a ton of RGB. I'm having this radiator be in a push-pull configuration for 100% heat reduction. And boy, was installing this a pain. I only had two arms, so it took me a long time. But finally, after finding a way to install it, it was time for the tubing. I'm going for this configuration. From the pump to the CPU block, the CPU block to the VRM, then from the VRM to the radiator, and finally from the radiator back to the pump. So let's go ahead and start making some tubing. I started by cutting some lengths, and to round them off, I went ahead and used the small tool in the kit that they gave you, and a little bit of sanding. I made sure to wash off every tube that I sanded, that way nothing got in my loop. I then used some angled adapters to join them together, because hard tube bending is a huge pain in my ass. I then connected all the tubing, and I also added a 24-pin ATX jumper cable so I could fill my pump with coolant. And speaking of coolant, while I was filling it, and thinking about making a cool shot here, it started leaking. So, I took it to the bathroom, and took it apart. The gasket was loose. Thanks for almost fucking up my system, Corsair. I then went ahead and voided the pump's warranty too, and stuck it back in my system. And, wow, was I happy to see what I made. This is my perfect build. The most amazing computer I've ever built. I'm really happy that I have something like this. And better yet, I did it myself. With the encouragement you guys gave me. By liking my videos and subscribing. And showing you guys actually care. Thank you guys for joining me in this video. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like. Dislike if you didn't. And comment down below what you guys thought about this build. And I'll see you guys in the next one.